does anybody remember what the first thing we're supposed to do? Wet, wet the wood. Pretty wet the wood. Yeah. I can't believe you guys remember that after all that conference. <laughs> 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 so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use two different types of cleaners. I'm going to use uh, two different types of more aggressive uh, cleaners and strippers. I'm going to describe them all to you and then I'll put the brightener on there. In regards to the cleaners, I have sodium percarbonate and sodium hypochlorite with the detergent in it. <clears throat> if you have, if you're mixing sodium percarbonate, it's probably going to be somewhere around six. It doesn't matter. It's oxy cleaner, whoever. You're about 16 ounces to a gallon. But you want to mix it if you can with warm water. It mixes much better in warm water. It's a big deal to get these guys to like agree to this stuff. I'll try to kill some of the grass. <laughs> All right, one of the things I did was, how, anybody remember a little bit about the, the dwell time on the uh, sodium hydroxide or the stripper? 10, 10 to 15 minutes? No, it's a cleaner. It's going to be about 30 minutes on the uh, sodium hydroxide. Mm -hmm. so. so, what I'm going to do here is I already put it on a little bit here. I just want to, um, because it has a longer dwell time, I'm going to just wet it a little more. Reapply, and now I'll do work on these. <laughs> okay, so as we said, first thing we're going to do is pre wet. That's the standard. So we're going to now the idea of this demo is to show you how the products work. You don't need pressure, so we're not using a pressure washer. Pressure washer is going to save a lot of time. I could probably use about the same amount of pressure with a pressure washer as that and do the same thing. So, and there is actually a company that used to be around here. They used to say they don't pressure wash anything to restore the wood. They would do everything by hand with a garden hose and sanding, of course. Okay, so the first thing we do is the sodium percarbonate. Sodium percarbonate is the one that's a powdered bleach. I'm going to put that on the first two here. You can see how it didn't dissolve very well. But you'll see it start working still. And that's because I didn't have warm water. Using the brush will agitate it just as if we were to uh, hit it again with a pressure washer. Okay, so there's your sodium percarbonate. That's your oxygenated bleach. That's the one that's going to be more environmentally friendly. If you're around a waterway or anything like that, that's a, a real obvious choice to use. We talk about sodium hypochlorite. Sodium hypochlorite with uh, some soap, and it should look like it should look like it. Shouldn't be something that's just going to totally bleach out the wood. metasilicate now. Sodium metasilicate. Right 
Sodium metasilicate is the one that is, when you have head, you have uh, organic growth, you got your lichen, your mold, your mildew, it goes something like this. And you'll see it instantly start darkening up the wood a little bit more than the others did. And that's because it's a higher alkaline. And the sodium hydroxide will do the same thing. Now sodium hydroxide as a cleaner. We're stripping it over here, we're taking the stain off. So we let that dwell. While it's dwelling, you're going to see the same thing, the reaction, when you're working. Okay? So you're going to see the chemical working, you'll know, suds up, so forth. This is what we have to rinse off when we're done here. So we're going to make sure we get a good rinse. Dwell for about 10 minutes on cleaning, even with the strippers. The strippers that you're using, when I say strippers, the sodium hydroxide or sodium metasilicate, even using those, more than 10 minutes is probably too much. Uh, on a wood surface. So the whole time it's on there, basically the way I describe it to a, um, a homeowner is, most people have self-cleaning ovens now, but if you use the oven cleaner, it's the same way. So you put it on, it works off the surface, like in the oven cleaner, 20 minutes on, wipe out. Otherwise you're scrubbing half a day, right? So it's the same principle. You explain that to the customers the same way. It's almost like using oven cleaner. Put it on, it just makes it easier for us to rinse off. Let that sit. Um, what we'll do here is we're going to rinse this off. And again, what do we do if it starts to dry? Missed it. Missed it. That's all you got to do. Just keep it wet. Now, one of the things I talked about. One of the things I talked about it inside, I, I mentioned when Lonnie was talking, everybody thinks oil bases are all penetrative. They're not. That's why when people say, hey, I, don't, I had bear, it was a hard time to get off. It's a bear to get off. Um, you run into that because they use linseed oil. And linseed oil is quick drying. Great for somebody working at home. They want it to dry. You know, they don't, they don't have the patience of some of the more, uh, longer drying oils like uh, paraffinic oil that's used common. Baker's Gray away, TWP, and some other ones. So not all oils are the same. So those film-forming oils are gonna be harder to get off. So that's why the dwell time might be 30 minutes when you're doing, when you're actually taking the coating off. When you're talking about water-based, same thing. You have, many of them are film-forming, but as you can see, some of them are penetrating, and that's the ones we have, that I have in there. The Deck Restoration Plus ones, there's sections of them, samples that are up on that front table. If you look on a side view, you can see where it goes into the wood. It doesn't sit on the surface. And who mentioned about the tough time with the acrylics? That was you. Yeah. The acrylics, what happens, they sit right on top. So when the dog scratches them or furniture scratches them, there's nothing there except the wood. That's why we want a penetrating product because that way they, they move the furniture, the dog scrapes against it. You might see a scratch mark, but you still see the same color because it went in. <clears throat> Those will also uh, wear away. If they wear away, that makes it easier for us going back to sell the maintenance because now all we have to do is just a light clean, replenish, and recoat. The ones like acrylics or those ones that are film formers, once they're off, you have to reinvent the wheel every time. So every time you go back, you're going to be stripping and restaining again. So that's why the maintenance ones are a lot better for a contractor. These also keeps us coming back. Okay. So again. Just keeping it all wet, it's all working. You see all the stuff already, you see wood fibers coming off already. One of the things we like to do uh, in wood restoration, not wood cleaning, um, I would emphasize that you should be using the word restoration, not cleaning. You clean a house, but you're not restoring the house. You're restoring the wood. 
restoration, if I'm a customer, I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm paying more for this service. So when you do root restoration, you're taking those gray wood fibers and removing them. The sun is already, they're decomposed. So what happens is we want to get that surface gray fibers off. Those people that are just throwing bleach on the wood, they're just bleaching those wood fibers. Those wood fibers are already ready to come off. So what happens is, if you go back and look at that in six months, a year, if they've sealed it after you've cleaned it with just putting it on dry wood and not getting rid of the gray wood fibers, you'll see it all blotchy because more than some of those gray wood fibers will come away from the wood. So the best thing to do is get rid of the wood fibers. So here we go. This will be our, uh, our pressure washer. Starting to see some difference already? Who's all those bleach guys? organic growth like this had on lichen, mold, mildew and so forth, a lot of grain going on. You can see the difference of what bleach. We'd have to do this twice, both of these, whereas here it's only a one-time thing. We haven't even put the brightener on yet. Now, what happens is we talked about a splash test. So this is what a splash test is. You throw some water on, it soaks in. If we were to put some water, if I can, we, if, just on this side, I was hoping it would bead up. It's kind of soaking in. Um, if it beads up, like wax on a car, then that's when you want to get break out the stripper. If it soaks in, we're just using a cleaner. So here we are. Um, we put on the four different types. We have sodium percarbonate. We have sodium hypochlorite. We have sodium metasilicate. We have sodium hydroxide. So you can kind of see how it looks already. Now we'll put the brightener on there. The brightener does some instant work. And then what will happen is we'll go back in and we'll come out later or you guys can come out we'll take a break uh, maybe later on we switch from Lonnie back to me you'll come out and these all look pretty close to the same but you will notice there's more wood tone in this this is a more optimal finish somebody's still going to say hey that looks pretty good it's better than what I had but if you didn't see them right next to each other you wouldn't know the difference this is the difference about being uh, professional or not Acid. They put it on hold. You see where it's lightening it up here? It's bringing back that natural color of the wood on cedar you're gonna get that darker grain and lighter grain but that's the natural tone of the wood and you'll see this just happens it reacts real quick now the hard part about doing wood especially if you guys are fairly new at it is when it looks wet you're like okay well this still has a little here, a little here. It's not, not quite what I wanted to. You'll be surprised when it dries. 
how well that comes up. I like it almost all pulled off already. This is how it's stripped off the end. Same thing with the brightener. So when you get done, this is what it should look like. Okay? You have your stain over here, you stripped it off, it's back to the natural grain. It should look like that after it's brightened. You could sit there and say, okay, well, I still don't have that vision of what it's gonna look like when it's dry. When you look at it later, you're gonna be amazed how this looks. So we left the stain side over here, we'll look at this. Same thing here. And then same thing over here. We'll compare these four. A lot of times I've talked about when we're, when we're doing this type of work, there is a good, better, and best method, okay? We can be good. If you want to charge a dollar a square foot, uh, you know, on the low end for this type of service, you can have at it. You know, there is a Walmart, there's a Saks Fifth Avenue. I don't know your business model or who you're trying to be. I got no problem, people talk about the $99 guy. <laughs> I got no problem with the $99 guy. But that $99 guy, that's his business model, and he says, for $99, I clean your house for an hour, and he does 16 homes a day. I could care less. That's his business model. Same thing, this is your business model. So you might have good, good, better, best. And you'll see how that, when this dries, which way you want to go. If you're looking for the most optimal service, you're probably going to go one of these other ways, right? But the other part of it, too, is how about what's easier on you guys? This is what I don't understand when everybody says, how many posts do you guys see with wood? So it's SH, SH, right? SH, everything's SH. Seriously? I mean, do you want to clean it once or twice? Do you want to have a good result? Or would you rather clean it once and get something like this? I mean, you're looking at it with your own eyes. This is sodium metasilicate. One time. Much better, right? On the prep side. It's all really just a matter of knowing what else is out there, what you can use. And if you add this to your arsenal, it becomes a lot easier to do this type of work. It's not as frustrating and uh, you'll get those type of results. So. Where, where would you put uh, You can probably get it from Deck Restoration Plus. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have it in powder and liquid form. Okay. Okay, cool. I have every one of these products. We have, and I have some in here in five gallon pails. I brought some brightener, I brought the stripper. Okay. I bought the sodium metasilicate. Most of the guys, as I said earlier, are taking the class, they use sodium metasilicate. Okay. And then they just say, hey, I'm just gonna use this for cleaning from now on. Okay. Because it does that kind of result. So they know that they're only going to do it one time, they don't have to worry about it. And also, if you're one of those people who want to say to your customer, we don't use bleach, it gives you that avenue as well. So, um, there are other products out there too besides this. I mentioned potassium hydroxide. Actually, my stripper has potassium hydroxide and butyl in it. We've got it so it's all in one and it all works real well. So, it kind of attacks everything. I think anybody's really gotten to that point yet, except us. Um, so there's all kinds of different things coming out all the time. The idea is to stay ahead of the, in the education. You know, you go back 20 years ago, and everything was bleach, sodium hydroxide, and CWF. Anybody know CWF? If you were around a long time. Contractors would have say, you know, even if they build the deck, they say, you gotta put CWF on it. It's clear wood finish, but see, it stood for that. <laughs> CWF. It's a flood product. Oh, okay. And everybody was that. Times have changed. And what we're doing today, in a year from now, everything's gonna be different again. So, really wanna keep up on this kind of stuff and then you can see those kind of results. So, any questions on the demo? So the uh, composite yes. jack's the same method? Um, you could use one of the bleach and then yes, then the brightener, yes, absolutely. Two step in the same way. You so would you can, like SH or? And, uh, you could use SH or sodium for carbonate on, that, on the old style the, uh, with the oxalic, right? Okay. The oxalic will do just what it did. It'll brighten the wood back to that natural tone. And it does that with the, the black wood fibers. It brings that, it takes it back. If you look at the side of the composite when I pass it around, you see all those little white specks? 
they're wood fibers. They're, what you'll do is they turn black on the surface, and when you put the oxalic, it brings it back to that wood tone. And that's what it's doing. So you see a lot of them are like that blue color, and it has like that black, but the black was like the blue wore off, and it's just... It keeps coming back. It's like Lonnie was talking about the sun earlier, the sun actually brings that to the surface. So the, the acid will get rid of that? I, the yeah. acid will get rid of that. Oh, wow. You know how I many people have said they owe me a steak dinner? I'm still trying to collect on them. <laughs> Just leave it. It works. Trust me. Uh, it's getting harder, though. Most of them you don't run into anymore. I mean, those decks are 15, 20 years and plus old, those old deposit decks. But they're all pretty much the same way. It doesn't matter if it's timber tech or Trex. There's just the percentage of wood content to make it different other than that. But if you can do that, man, it does your job become so much easier. It didn't take that long. It was 10 minutes. Your, 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 your result is that much better. I mean, I, I, to me, it's a no-brainer. Stay ahead of the, of the curve on the learning, and you'll, you can go from there. Um, if, uh, if anybody wants that stripper, you would mention the stripper. When we get to the end of the day, we can come back out here and grab that. But I do have the brightener. I have the sodium metasilic, and I have those two. And if not, we can always ship it to you. you think it works. I'll tell you guys a story about I don't do wood. I'm 20 minutes from Everett, right? I don't do wood at all. Friend's mother wanted wood deck, small wood deck. It must have been 200 square feet. Wanted it done, begged me, begged me. So I'm like, all right, what the hell, I'll do it. Well, I went to the store, bought some deck stripper. Called Everett about seven hours later. I'm like, dude, this shit isn't coming all off. And he goes, yeah, it must be what's a bear, I think he said, right? He goes, I'll meet you in Cherry Hill in 20 minutes. He brought me some stripper. <laughs> Half hour later, it was done. So, did, you get, did you get that steak dinner yet? <laughs> yeah, I didn't give a for one. Um, yeah, there is different levels of a product. Just so you know, if you go into the store, if you go into a Home Depot or you go into a Sherwin Williams, you can't make it any stronger. It, it is what it is. They're not commercial grade. And I'll just be honest with you, I'm not trying to put down Sherwin Williams, especially since I'm on video. Hi, Sherwin Williams, I still love you. Um, then more, a little more, because um, I've consulted for them more. Um, anyway. Their products don't even remove, their, their state strippers and so they don't even work well on their own products. They don't remove their products. They struggle with them. So that's why you have to start getting into some of these commercial grade type stuff or some of these more advanced stuff. There's a lot going into that stripper that I've developed. And I also have one coming out. It's going to be um, Stripper Plus, which is going to hopefully, we're pretty close to it, help with those deck over products and some of the other ones as well. Um, so that's kind of working out a little bit too. So we're constantly working on stuff too, and the industry is doing the same thing. So um, just some food for thought. Thanks for that plug. Right. Hey, works. It works. Save my butt. Only cost me oh, twenty bucks for that one. I did. You owe me steak. <laughs> Wait, just yeah, reverse that. Yeah. Um, no, the people that have used this, the people have used the stuff though. I think they've kind of run into the same thing. See the colors of the wood. Questions. Same thing with like a, a cedar roof or a siding. We just soft wash it with. A I've soft washed a whole day. I got a guy. The guy was struggling. He says, "Ever, I don't know what I'm doing right. I'm not doing them wrong. Maybe it's the soft wash system I have. Maybe I need a pressure washer, more pressure, this and that." I said, "No, it's probably your dwell time. It's whatever." So, what are you using now? He tells me it's a soft wash system and how many gallons per minute. Blah blah blah. Whatever. I said, "No, I'll come out with you. We'll do a job." So I went up to, uh, I don't know where the hell it was, Lakewood or somewhere further up north, Jersey. We got to it, did the whole thing. I mean, it was all dwell time. We had to probably wait about 45 minutes. He didn't know what was on it. And it's all just the dwell time. The difference between 30 minutes and 45 minutes can make a big difference. If I'm gonna wait 15 minutes and I can rinse it off in an hour versus wait 30 minutes and take two hours and struggle, this makes sense. So sometimes you just have to weigh those, weigh those dwell times. Things that will affect you, like if you've got an Olympic um, Cabot, some of those, they come off pretty easy, you know, you're pretty good. But like I mentioned, Bear and Sickens and some of the others, they're a little bit harder to get off. So you gotta be a little more patient, a little bit more dwell time. That's all it is, it really is. All right, anything else? What about on the cabins? Cabins? Yeah. Any of the same stuff? It's the same way. Yep. Same thing. No different. No different. The only difference between a vertical surface and a horizontal is you got to keep it wet, and you may have to reapply. So if you get to a 30-minute or 45-minute dwell time, 
you might have to reapply because it's coming down as you're missing. That would be the only difference. Still patience. Right. So the first thing is wet it down first. Right. Then pretty much strip it. Right. If it's going to be that. So strip it, you know, put it on at well time, whatever amount is, 35, 45 minutes. Then you come with the oxalic afterwards or do you rinse and then come with Just like that, the oxalic cloth still wet. Out of out. Now, for you guys doing oils, some of the other products. Oh, yeah. You got to come back in a couple days and stain this, right? Yeah. Do you know if you're using Deck Restoration Plus stain, I could start staining that right now? Give my bucket. Give my bucket. That's simple. <laughs> Operationally, it's give a little difficult for us, so what we do, we'll go out and prep the deck with day one, but we can still come back the next day. And if it rained like it did last night, right. I can be staining right now. It just poured here. Even with raining here this morning. Oh. I could be staining right now. The best part about it, though, is when I go for the maintenance coats, that's what we talked about, 70%. Right. How about this for making money? I can clean it, go get a cup of coffee, come back and start staining, call it a day, boom, boom, I'm done, A to Z. Got my thousand bucks. It's easy. Yeah. Really, because you can do it all the same day. That's what makes it a lot easier, too. So you don't have the labor, you don't have the guys going out twice. It saves you more time, a little bit easier on scheduling. We're always challenged in the Northeast, Pacific Northwest especially, and other places too. When we start getting the rain, the humidity, the heat, everything else, if you know that you can be a little more flexible with the product, you can. Uh, they mentioned about not having oil uh, as available. It's very hard to get anything oil-based in New Jersey. This makes it really easy. If you're taking a water base, it will actually go into the wood. So it's working more like an oil. And we say that, we sell it as it performs like an oil. Because it goes into the wood, it doesn't sit on the surface. So that's what we're trying to do with the deck restoration plus thing. Yes. Well, most cabins do they use oil based or water based? No. You'll have both. It's, it's, it's a just like it's a preference. It's like they were talking about the the sand difference. It's a it's a yeah it's a preference what you can get a, what you can use in that particular state. Yeah. Where are you where are you you're Maryland or South Carolina? South Carolina. Yeah. Damn. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it depends on what yeah, you're right, using right, that state. I'm, yeah. I'm in a place where right by the well, lake because they got the this big lake. I was just going to say, one of the guys was at the Myrtle Beach event. Yeah. He came up to me. I didn't know who he was. Actually, the builder who does a bunch of exotic docks and decks yeah. and stuff, right. working around old waterways, he sent the guy because he's going to be staying in these products. He went back, came back, and he ordered 15 five gallon pails of stain. And they started using the stuff right away. Loved it. Kept right on going on eBay. See? So when you're on waterways, that's the option is to yeah. use a water base. Right. I mean, to me, it's like a no-brainer. Yeah. Um, I think as we progress further into this, I think you're going to probably, you're going to probably, we're going to see less and less oils. Right. Um, you know, other states and so forth, they're just catching up with the right. stuff. So right. I think that's what we're going to see with changes in the industry. If it was me, I'm going to use the sodium metasilicate. I'm not even going to put bleach on it. Anybody who's cleaned an EPA deck with bleach, it does not come out good. It kind of a little blotchy, and so forth. You get a more consistent clean on an EPA deck with uh, sodium metasilicate or even sodium hydroxide, and then follow up to oxalic acid. Okay. So you just the, uh, EPA is beautiful wood. The most optimal way you're going to get that clean and to make that look is is that way. Okay. So according according to the wizards, are saying that any type of wood cleaning, you might just use the sodium metasilicate. Right off the rip. Except for maintenance cleaning. Yes. Right, except for maintenance cleaning. So right, right off the rip, get it clean with the that, sodium that's metasilic. Pretty much what that's we the do. wizard's way. What's <laughs> maintenance? Maintenance, I go to bleach. You could use either bleach for maintenance. Okay. Remember what I said? Bleach reacts with the first thing it comes in contact with. If we seal our stain and we're going back to the maintenance, that hopefully that mold of mildew is just sitting on the right. top of our surface. That's, that's by the way, that's another good thing about water base. You don't have to worry about mold and mildew. Like you do with the oil, it doesn't dry right. Yeah. Anyway, it should be on the surface. So you could use sodium hypochlorite, your house wash, whatever. You're washing the house, wash the deck, yeah. boom. And if you use the deck restoration plus, when you're done the house, you can stain the deck and get out of there. Right. That's how it works. I, I, I don't think, bump. Yeah, I don't bump. <laughs> yeah, I did this one lady, just a small section. Her whole deck is, I would say, it's like hit. You walk on it, you, you can just, you might as well just slide. Just slide. Sodium medicine. And um, the thing was, I just, I just had my, um, my M5, and I just took some of it off. Took it all off, but then you can see the spots of the mildew up in there. That's where the spore started. Yeah. And that's, of course, sodium metacillic. Sodium metacillic.
Get it out of here. It's <laughs> putting you in the commercial. <laughs> Is your ratio the same for stripping and staining? For the uh, it depends on which product you're using. Most of it's three to one to seven to one. Three to one on the strong end, seven to one on a weaker end. It depends on how much growth or how much stain we're taking off that glass. But we, you, if you get front, we give you the dilution mask. Uh, in which case you need to use always the pressure, I mean, pressure washer. If you have that gray surface, well, you're going to have to need to remove a coating. But if the wood's gray, yeah. definitely need a little bit of moderate pressure to remove those gray wood fibers. That's wood restoration. Okay. Just throwing a cleaner on or bleach on it, on dry wood or just letting it on there and letting that do the work, just bleaching out those wood fibers, it'll be unnaturally whitish looking. Like, see how there's wood tone in that? Right. Mm -hmm. You've seen when you just put bleach right. on water, too strong right. bleach, it's whitish. Yeah. And that's what we don't want. It's not natural. That's not the way to do it. What happens is you'll go back to that fence or that deck in six months or a year and it'll be blotchy. And some of those gray wood fibers will yeah. come off, come away from the wood. So so you're saying just even on this, you use the same thing, sodium metal silly, just to put a, put, a, put, a, put a wood that's like that, that's unstained? Could, yes. Just about up, like I'm saying, straight up. You're trying to get that nice, real yeah. rich wood tone. You, right. want to, you want to hold on to that. Right. Sodium hypochlorite's yeah, a little hard. A little hard to do that with. Yeah. Now, with the stain, do the same way because you got first you got to strip it, or do you sodium metallic first? Whichever one you're doing, doesn't matter if you're stripping sodium metallic as a cleaner, whatever. Brighten it with the oxalic acid. That's the ones could, that, those are the ones that are like stained fences. That's your brightener. The stained fences I'm talking about when you first get up on it. You're stripping it off? Yeah. Or you're just cleaning it? You're going to, you're going to strip it off, obviously. And you probably want to go to sodium hydroxide if you're stripping it off. Okay, so right. It's in the book, duh. It is. Yeah. <laughs> you got the book. All right. All right. Anybody else? You all have more questions. When we get in, we'll start talking about the coatings and stuff after Lonnie's done. You guys can head on back in. Those guys will continue on. I'll get this cleaned up, and we can go from there. All right? More money, more money, more money. Did you drive? I'll take you this man's shirt. He came along. It's your first time?